Hi there, it's Dr. Davis again, and today I'll be talking about one of the more common tests I'll use in the office for testing SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. If you haven't heard about SIBO, it's a condition where bacteria migrate into the small intestine where they're not supposed to be. This interferes with the assimilation of nutrients from food, along with causing bad-smelling gas, bloating, and pain. Sounds a lot like IBS, doesn't it? Well, that's because most people with IBS have SIBO. In fact, some researchers like Mark Pimentel at UCLA feel that SIBO is present in the vast majority of IBS patients. This is based on experimental and clinical studies that show that when SIBO is treated effectively, the symptoms of IBS many times can be completely resolved. That's big news for IBS sufferers who would have been told previously that they just have to manage their symptoms. To keep the bacteria in their proper place, the large intestine, the ileocecal valve that separates the large and small intestine prevents the bacteria from backing up. And if that option doesn't do the job, the immune system lining the GI tract goes to work and attacks the foreign bacteria and pathogens, preventing them from getting a good foothold. There are a few ways to test for overgrowth. One way is to sample the bacteria in the GI tract with endoscopy by entering the stomach, but this can only sample the upper portion of the small intestine. Colonoscopy is another option, but this measures only the lower end of the small intestine. The gold standard, and the one that I use, is the hydrogen methane breath test to measure the gases that bacteria produce. This is a great test because it's not invasive and it accurately measures possible overgrowth over the entire length of the intestine. Hydrogen and methane cause symptoms in IBS and result in damage to the microvilli that lead to malabsorption, fatigue, hormonal imbalances, restless leg syndrome, and neurological symptoms. In addition, the production of methane decreases the cleansing wave activity in the small intestine, slowing movement, and almost always leads to constipation. The SIBO breath test is actually performed by taking a breath measurement of hydrogen and methane at baseline, and then every 20 minutes after drinking a solution of lactulose sugar while food particles move through the intestine. This is an example report of a hydrogen methane breath test. A hydrogen increase of over 20 parts per million, as we see here, signifies a positive test for SIBO. The cutoff for a normal methane test is below 3 parts per million. And so in this table, you can see that methane is elevated as well, showing that this patient is positive for methane too. In this test result, hydrogen elevates in the second error, which is typical in infections of the lower small intestine. When we look at the methane level, we can see that methane hovers at or about three parts per million until the lactulose solution at the end of the second error reaches the large intestine. In this case, I would rate the hydrogen test as severe and the methane test as borderline. On this last test, we see that the purple methane line in the graph begins over 20 parts per million and raises further to over 50. This is clearly a positive methane SIBO test. Now take a look at the blue hydrogen line. It starts off below the cutoff, raises a bit in the second hour, but never really elevates over the 20 parts per million cutoff. This would be a clear negative hydrogen test. So what does this mean to you? Well, the treatment would depend on the severity and the kind of overgrowth involved. For instance, certain antibiotics such as rifaximin that are commonly used in SIBO are much less effective for the methane-generating bacteria called archaea. We have found, and the research supports this, that natural herbal antimicrobials like berberine and others are more effective in SIBO with less side effects. One of the reasons for this is because plant substances like herbs have a broad spectrum of activity along with many active compounds, and so it's less likely that organisms will develop resistance to a botanical treatment unlike standard antibiotics. Also, the botanicals used are in the form of formulas so that many different herbs are combined to form synergistic and more functional compounds. In addition, I found that in our clinic, the relapse rate is far below that of the published 50% of the drug approach. Of course, after the SIBO is controlled, it's imperative that you solve the problem that brought on the overgrowth in the first place, like leaky gut, inflammation, H. pylori infections in the stomach, or bad eating habits 
and then restore the health of the gut with a low grain diet and sequential probiotics and prebiotics. Biofilm disruptors and GI motility supplements can be helpful as well. So the takeaway here is that to know if you have overgrowth, you simply have to be tested with the correct test. Then after you know exactly what kind of SIBO you have, natural antimicrobials are the way to go to get this taken care of. After that, a clear and directed program to heal your intestines will get your guts working like you wish they did. And if you're interested in additional information about ways to solve your IBS problem, please visit our site and subscribe to make sure you're getting all the updates and the new videos as they come online. And if you'd like to work with me personally, you can let me know there too so that we can get that set up as soon as possible. Health is on the way.